Hi, my name is Dr. Kara Jones. I'm a board certified OBGYN. I've been living and working in Lancaster for the last 20 years. Um, I'm here to talk today about perimenopause. And in, really to, in order to talk about perimenopause, we need to kind of understand the basics about what happens in a woman's uh, physiology and anatomy. And so I'm gonna start off with some, probably some really basic concepts that most of you already know, but this will help us kind of put it into context and better understand what happens to our body in perimenopause if we understand in general what happens in a woman's body. So to begin with, most of you know this, that um, a woman has um, a unique anatomy, which includes the ovary, and the ovary on a woman is where the female eggs, or we'll call them follicles, will be produced that then can become later a pregnancy if they're fertilized. They also, the ovary is also the place where the hormones, estrogen and progesterone, are produced. The other unique organ to women is our uterus. And the uterus is the muscular womb, which is where a pregnancy would implant and grow. So there are two parts to the uterus. There's the muscular part of the uterus, which is what stretches and accommodates a pregnancy when we're pregnant. It also is what uh, contracts when we have labor and what cramps when we have our menstrual, um, menstrual cycle. The center part of the uterus, which is the endometrium, this is the light pink portion on this model, is the part of the uterus which responds to the hormones of the ovaries. So during the early part of our, our menstrual cycle, it is going to be responding to the estrogen levels, which are gonna um, increase the um, production of the menstrual endometrium, and it gets uh, grows and gets thicker. And then there's ovulation that occurs, and then when there is no uh, conception or um, fertilization or implantation in the uterus, there's a trigger which the ovaries then tell the um, uterus, there's no pregnancy this month, and that is what causes menstruation. Menstruation, that is when the endometrium then will um, uh, come out of the, um, the uterus and along with the blood from our menstrual flow. And um, that is uh, menstruation and the menstrual cycle in, in, in a nutshell. The other really important kind of uh, part of our anatomy to think about is what's going on in our brain during that time. So our brain has a gland called the pituitary gland, and the pituitary gland is known as the master gland. And it's the master gland because it really directs the hormonal, um, the hormones from several different parts of our endocrine system. Um, but we're gonna focus on how it affects the ovary. And in general, the hormones from the pituitary gland that affect menstruation and perimenopause and then menopause are follicle stimulating hormone or FSH and the luteinizing hormone, which is LH. So these hormones, which come from our, our brain in the pituitary, will talk to the ovary and tell the ovary to stimulate another follicle. So the job of the pituitary is to push the ovary to have a follicle that is made that month. And then the luteinizing hormone is what then, which spikes uh, the hormone level, which triggers then ovulation. So when we are going through perimenopause and then menopause, the brain continues to try to get the ovary to work and the follicle stimulating hormone will increase. It's sort of like yelling at the ovary and saying, come on, you can give us a little bit more. But menopause and perimenopause is all about the ovary. The ovary is what makes our follicles, which then what also makes our hormones. And those hormones are estrogen and progesterone, and they're the unique hormones uh, of a woman. And you 
you know just naturally that as we get older, so into our 40s, late 30s, 40s, our fertility decreases. And that is because the quality of the follicles and the frequency of the follicles being produced diminishes. And most women know that their fertility decreases as they get to their late 30s and then to their 40s. There are, of course, women who are able to conceive and um, get pregnant into their 40s. But in general, most women will see this decline as they get into their late 30s and early 40s. And this is because the ovary is no longer having as good a quality of follicles and is frequently having the follicles. And that change then also happens in the amount of hormones that are being made in the ovary during that time. The precisional um, production of estrogen and progesterone starts to diminish. And most women will experience that as how it's reflected by their uterus. So most people don't really think about that what's going on in their ovaries so much as how their menstrual cycle is uh, changing. So the uterus reflects what's going on at the level of the ovaries. So as the ovaries begin to have less precision in terms of its uh, production of estrogen and progesterone and fewer follicles, women begin to start having menstrual changes. The most common symptom of perimenopause is going to be menstrual changes. And at this point, we should explain what we mean by menopause. Menopause is when a woman has 12 months consecutively with no menstrual flow. That is when we know that the ovaries at that point no longer are going to produce anymore. And if a woman begins to have bleeding after she said 12 months in a row with no flow, it should be investigated. That's a sign that there might be something that's abnormal that's going on. But prior to that, and the average age of menopause is going to be 51 and a half. Prior to that is the perimenopause. And most people describe it as about four years prior to when you have menopause. So with that kind of math, it's around age 47. So 47, the average age of perimenopause beginning and menopause being 51 and a half. Now, this is not something that is the same for every woman. Every woman is unique and what actually happens to them is going to be, you know, a little bit different than what's going to happen to their sister and their friends. So um, it's just sort of a general uh, thought. Now, there is, of course, a bell curve in terms of how to think about this. There are some women who are going to go through menopause earlier, and there's going to be some women who go through menopause later. So what is the normal sort of range that it should be? If a woman goes through menopause prior to age 40, that's considered abnormal and would be considered premature ovarian failure or premature ovarian insufficiency and should be treated and something that could be looked into um, by a doctor. Um, then the kind of the end of, of uh, the, the bell curve of when is late, um, most women have gone through menopause by age 60. The number one symptom of perimenopause, though, is changes in your menstrual cycle. So the typical woman's menstrual cycle, if a typical woman is a 28-day menstrual cycle, then in their early 40s, their cycles would be closer together, meaning if they previously had a 28-day cycle, now maybe there's 25 days from the, the start of their first period to the start of their next period. This is a common thing. Is that the, the cycles will become closer together and then it will get further apart, more like a 40 or 50 days um, between cycles. But in truth, it's variable. So people who previously had irregular cycles now become regular and people who had regular cycles become irregular. It, it's, it's really common for there just to be change. I tell people that when you start to have periods every two weeks, if they last more than seven days, or they're very heavy. Now, how heavy is heavy? Most people consider heavy being whatever it is they're not used to. Um, but really, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking more like if you're having to change your product every hour. 
In any case, if you have any one of those symptoms, you should see, you should reach out to your doctor, and they may want to do some evaluation. Um, one step in the evaluation is an ultrasound. The ultrasound will be to look and see whether or not there's any structural issues within the uterus or within the endometrium, which could be causing the extra bleeding, the frequent bleeding, or the heavy bleeding, like a polyp or a fibroid. Also a part of the evaluation is to do a sampling of the endometrial lining, and that can frequently be done in the office with an endometrial biopsy, or it can be done as a DNC. Next, what do you do about this? Well, as long as the endometrium is not found to have any precancer or cancer in it, then you can treat the changes in the menstrual um, flow with some, some options. One is to use uh, a IUD, which has progesterone in it, for instance, like Mirena, and that then puts the extra progesterone just inside the uterus so that the lining is not overgrown and it will stay thin. Most women will have lighter periods and less flow. Some women will become amenorrheic or will have no periods while they have the marina. Another option is to use um, the pill. Um, in the perimenopause, we frequently use a lower dose pill, meaning that the estrogen level in the pill is lower. Um, as long as a woman doesn't have any contraindications to using uh, hormones, such as a tumor like a breast cancer or um, that has a hormone uh, relation to it or has had a stroke or is a smoker, um, then the, the uh, low dose pill can be used up to age 50, 51, which is being the average age of menopause. Another option is to do a ablation. Now, an ablation in this sense is a heat treatment of the endometrium. So we just said that the endometrium or the uterus reflects what's going on in, in the ovary because the endometrium is hormonally responsive and will grow with um, the hormones from the ovary telling it what to do. So if you heat treat the endometrium, then those basal cells in the endometrium are permanently changed so that they don't respond to the estrogen and progesterone that the ovary is making as much. Um, and some women will again no longer have their menses after having an ablation. Some women will just have lighter periods. Um, these are things you can talk with your doctor about options of how to manage this. But if you're having fewer periods, lighter periods, or um, uh, shorter periods, most women don't find this disruptive. They can find it uh, something that they've looked forward to and um, isn't really a problem for them. Now, the second symptom that people have, and about 80% of women have, um, is vasomotor symptoms. Now, vasomotor symptoms are the term for what most people commonly say, hot flashes. Hot flashes are the body's lack or its withdrawal from having estrogen. So as the estrogen levels lower in perimenopause and then menopause, the body reacts by having these hot flashes. And it is experienced as like this heat, which is sort of seems to start from within and then come out. And many women will have sweating. They'll feel like they need to remove a sweater or a jacket that they're wearing. Um, when it happens at night, it's called a night sweat. And it frequently will wake women up in the middle of the night. They'll feel hot and sweat and kick off the covers and then they cool off. And it can be very disruptive to the sleep. If it's happening many times during the sleep, it can become a factor that makes it harder to work in the morning or be able to do the things that you normally want to do because you're not well slept. Um, it can also be a source of embarrassment for some women when they're at work and they feel that people are looking at them and they see that they're sweating and it's not something that they can easily conceal. And so that some women present to the doctor saying, I'm having these symptoms, what can I do about them? The number one way to deal with the estrogen uh, levels being lower is to replace it. 
Um, and that's something that can be part of another talk at some point about hormone replacement. But um, for most women, the, the hot flashes and night sweats will be somewhere between a few times a day and maybe once or two at night. To some women have them many times in an hour and they might have them many times at night. And depending on how, what a woman experiences um, and what her medical history is, um, then uh, a discussion can be made with your doctor about whether you're a good candidate for hormone replacement or whether something that you can sort of weather. Um, most women have hot flashes for a period of about two years, but there are women who have hot flashes their whole life. Um, it's infrequent, but there are always women who come in who say that they are still having hot flashes. The good news is for most people, it becomes very infrequent um, if, it, if it continues. So we said that all women experience changes in their periods. 80% of women experience hot flashes or night sweats. Other women will just have some sleep disturbances that may not even be associated with um, hot flashes or night sweats and some of them will develop some mood issues in the perimenopause time. The good news is the women who develop issues with their mood during perimenopause, frequently this resolves with menopause, um, and it's really a temporary time. Finally, the last symptom that people might experience is um, vaginal dryness, and this is then something that is typically later in uh, in the menopausal uh, time frame, when the estrogen levels have been lower for a longer period of time. And this can also be addressed with a discussion with your doctor. So um, in short, perimenopause is the approximately four years before menopause. Menopause and perimenopause are all about the ovaries. What is going on with the ovaries? They're having less follicular um, development and eventually complete cessation of follicular development. Then in the perimenopause, you're having less estrogen and progesterone production, ultimately ending in no estrogen and progesterone production. And menopause is when a woman has 12 consecutive months without a menses. I hope you enjoyed this brief talk on perimenopause. The truth is perimenopause and menopause is natural. It's a normal thing that happens to us and it's something that is temporary. So remember, you're not alone. And your doctor is a great resource which can help navigate you through this difficult time and also very exciting time in, in, in a woman's life because there, even though change is happening, change is not always bad.